The Three Railway Engines by the Reverend W. Audrey Edwards Day Out Once upon a time there was a little engine called Edward. He lived in a shed with five other engines. They were all bigger than Edward and boasted about it. The driver won't choose you again, they said. He wants big, strong engines like us. Edward had not been out for a long time. He began to feel sad. Patience is a virtue, so it never has to take a little time to see. So top them had has taught you. Just then, the driver and fireman came along to start work. Don't get too excited, just try staying calm. Thinking for a minute, saves you so much harm. Everything around you is rushing here and there. Life can be so simple if you make time to spare. Patience is a The driver looked at Edward. Why are you sad? he asked. Would you like to come out today? Yes, please, said Edward. So the fireman lit the fire and made a nice lot of steam. Then the driver pulled the lever and Edward puffed away. Peep, peep, he whistled. Look at me now. The others were very cross at being left behind. Away went Edward to get some coaches. Be careful, Edward, said the coaches. Don't bump and bang us like the other engines do. So Edward came up to the coaches very, very gently, and the shunter fastened the coupling. Thank you, Edward, said the coaches. That was kind. We are glad you are taking us today. Then they went to the station, where the people were waiting. Peep, peep, whistled Edward. Get in quickly, please. So the people got in quickly, and Edward waited happily for the guard to blow his whistle and wave his green flag. He waited and waited. There was no whistle, no green flag. Peep, 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 peep. Where is that guard? Edward was getting anxious. The driver and fireman asked the station master, Have you seen the guard? No, he said. They asked the porter, Have you seen the guard? Yes, last night, said the porter. Edward began to get cross. Are we ever going to start? he said. Patience is a Just then a little boy shouted, Here he comes! And there the guard was, running down the hill 
with his flags in one hand and a sandwich in the other. He ran onto the platform, blew his whistle and jumped into his van. Edward puffed off. He did have a happy day. All the children ran to wave as he went past and he met old friends at all the stations. He worked so hard that the driver promised to take him out again next day. I'm going out again tomorrow, he told the other engines that night in the shed. What do you think of that? But he didn't hear what they thought, for he was so tired and happy that he fell asleep at once. Edward and Gordon. One of the engines in Edward's shed was called Gordon. He was very big and very proud. Watch me this afternoon, little Edward, he boasted, as I rush through with the express. That will be a splendid sight for you. Just then, his driver pulled the lever. Goodbye, little Edward, said Gordon, as he puffed away. Look out for me this afternoon. Edward went off too, to do some shunting. Edward liked shunting. It was fun playing with trucks. He would come up quietly and give them a pull. Oh, 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 screamed the trucks. Whatever is happening? Then he would stop and the silly trucks would go bump into each other. Oh, 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 they cried again. Edward pushed them until they were running nicely, and when they weren't expecting it, he would stop. One of them would be sure to run on to another line. Edward played till there were no more trucks. Then he stopped to rest. Presently he heard a whistle. Gordon came puffing along very slowly and very crossly. Instead of nice shining coaches, he was pulling a lot of very dirty coal trucks. 
A good train, a good train, a good train, he grumbled. The shame of it, the shame of it, the shame of it. He went slowly through, with the trucks clattering and banging behind him. Edward laughed and went to find some more trucks. Soon afterwards, a porter came and spoke to his driver. Gordon can't get up the hill. Will you take Edward and push him, please? They found Gordon halfway up the hill and very cross. His driver and fireman were talking to him severely. You are not trying, they told him. I can't do it, said Gordon. The noisy trucks hold an engine back so. If they were coaches now, clean, sensible things that come quietly, that would be different. Edward's driver came up. We've come to push, he said. No use at all, said Gordon. You wait and see, said Edward's driver. They brought the train back to the bottom of the hill. Edward came up behind the brake van, ready to push. Beep, beep, I'm ready, said Edward. Poop, poop, no good, grumbled Gordon. The guard blew his whistle and they pulled and pushed as hard as they could.
The Sad Story of Henry Once an engine attached to a train was afraid of a few drops of rain. It went into a tunnel and squeaked through its funnel and never came out again. The engine's name was Henry. His driver and fireman argued with him, but he would not move. The rain will spoil my lovely green paint and red stripes, he said. The guard blew his whistle till he had no more breath and waved his flag till his arms ached. But Henry still stayed in the tunnel and blew steam at him. I'm not going to spoil my lovely green paint and red stripes for you, he said rudely. The passengers came and argued too, but Henry would not move. A fat director who was on the train told the guard to get a rope. We will pull you out, he said. But Henry only blew steam at him and made him wet. They hooked the rope on and all pulled, except the fat director. My doctor has forbidden me to pull, he said. They pulled and pulled and pulled, but still Henry stayed in the tunnel. Then they tried pushing from the other end. The fat director said, one, two, three, push, but did not help. My doctor has forbidden me to push, he said. They pushed and pushed and pushed, but still Henry stayed in the tunnel. At last, another train came. The guard waved his red flag and stopped it. The two engine drivers, the two firemen and the two guards went and argued with Henry. Look! It has stopped raining, they said. Yes, but it will begin again soon, said Henry. And what would become of my green paint with red stripes then? So they brought the other engine up and it pushed and puffed and puffed and pushed as hard as ever it could. But still Henry stayed in the tunnel. So they gave it up. They told Henry... We shall leave you here for always and always and always. They took up the old rails, built a wall in front of him and cut a new tunnel. Now Henry can't get out and he watches the trains rushing through the new tunnel. He is very sad because no one will ever see his lovely green paint with red stripes again but I think he deserved it, don't you? Edward, Gordon and Henry Edward and Gordon often went through the tunnel where Henry was shut up. Edward would say, Beep, beep, hello! And Gordon would say, Poop, 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 serves you right. Poor Henry had no steam to answer. His fire had gone out. Soot and dirt from the tunnel roof had spoiled his lovely green paint and red stripes. He was cold and unhappy, and wanted to come out and pull trains too. Gordon always pulled the express. He was proud of being the only engine strong enough to do it. There were many heavy coaches full of important people like the fat director who had punished Henry. Gordon was seeing how fast he could go. Hurry, 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 he panted. Trickety trock, trickety trock, trickety trock, said the coaches. Gordon could see Henry's tunnel in front. In a minute, he thought, I'll poop, poop, poop at Henry and rush through and out into the open again. Closer and closer he came. He was almost there when crack. Weesh! He was in a cloud of steam and going slower and slower. 
His driver stopped the train. What has happened to me? asked Gordon. I feel so weak. You've burst your safety valve, said the driver. You can't pull the train any more. Oh dear, said Gordon. We were going so nicely too. Look at Henry laughing at me. Gordon made a face at Henry and blew smoke at him. Everybody got out and came to see Gordon. Humph, said the fat director. I never like these big engines. Always going wrong. Send for another engine at once. While the guard went to find one, they uncoupled Gordon and ran him on a siding out of the way. The only engine left in the shed was Edward. I'll come and try, he said. Gordon saw him coming. That's no use, he said. Edward can't pull the train. Edward puffed and pulled and pulled and puffed. But he couldn't move the heavy coaches. I told you so, said Gordon rudely. Why not let Henry try? Yes, said the fat director. I will. Will you help pull this train, Henry? he asked. Yes, said Henry at once. So Gordon's driver and fireman lit his fire. Some plate layers broke down the wall and put back the rails. And when he had steam up, Henry puffed out. He was dirty. His boiler was black and he was covered with cobwebs. Oh, I'm so stiff. Oh, I'm so stiff, he groaned. You'd better have a run to ease your joints and find a turntable, said the fat director kindly. Henry came back feeling better and they put him in front. Beep, beep, said Edward. I'm ready. Beep, 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 said Henry. So am I. Pull hard, pull hard, pull hard, puffed Edward. We'll do it, we'll do it, we'll do it, puffed Henry. Pull hard, we'll do it, pull hard, we'll do it, pull hard, we'll do it. They puffed together. The heavy coaches jerked and began to move, slowly at first, then faster and faster. We've done it together, we've done it together, we've done it together, said Edward and Henry. You've done it, hooray, you've done it, hooray, you've done it, hooray, sang the coaches. All the passengers were excited. The fat director leaned out of the window to wave to Edward and Henry, but the train was going so fast that his hat blew off into a field where a goat ate it for his tea. They never stopped till they came to the big station at the end of the line. The passengers all got out and said, Thank you. And the fat director promised Henry a new coat of paint. Would you like blue and red? Yes, please, said Henry. Then I'll be like Edward. Edward and Henry went home quietly. And on their way, they helped Gordon back to the shed. All three engines are now great friends. Wasn't Henry pleased when he had his new coat? He's very proud of it, as all good engines are. But he doesn't mind the rain now, because he knows that the best way to keep his paint nice is not to run into tunnels, but to ask his driver to rub him down when the day's work is over. Thomas the Tank Engine. Thomas and Gordon. Thomas was a tank engine who lived at a big station. He had six small wheels, a short stumpy funnel, a short stumpy boiler, and a short stumpy dome. He was a fussy little engine, 
always pulling coaches about. He pulled them to the station ready for the big engines to take out on long journeys. And when trains came in and the people had got out, he would pull the empty coaches away so that the big engines could go and rest. He was a cheeky little engine too. He thought no engine worked as hard as he did. So he used to play tricks on them. He liked best of all to come quietly beside a big engine dozing on a siding and make him jump. Peep, 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 pip, peep. Wake up, lazy bones, he would whistle. Why don't you work hard like me? Then he would laugh rudely and run away to find some more coaches. Thomas and his friends. One day Gordon was resting on a siding. He was very tired. The big express he always pulled had been late and he had had to run as fast as he could to make up for lost time. He was just going to sleep when Thomas came up in his cheeky way. Wake up, lazy bones, he whistled. Do some hard work for a change. You can't catch me. And he ran off laughing. Instead of going to sleep again, Gordon thought how he could pay Thomas out. One morning, Thomas wouldn't wake up. His driver and fireman couldn't make him start. His fire went out and there was not enough steam. It was nearly time for the express. The people were waiting, but the coaches weren't ready. At last, Thomas started. Oh dear, oh dear, he yawned. Come on, said the coaches, hurry up. Thomas gave them a rude bump and started for the station. Don't stop dawdling, don't stop dawdling, he grumbled. Where have you been, where have you been, asked the coaches crossly. Thomas fussed into the station where Gordon was waiting. Poop, 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 hurry up you, said Gordon crossly. Peep, pip, peep, hurry yourself, said cheeky Thomas. Yes, said Gordon, I will. And almost before the coaches had stopped moving, Gordon came out of his siding and was coupled to the train. Poop, poop, he whistled. Get in quickly, please. So the people got in quickly. The signal went down, the clock struck the hour, the guard waved his green flag, and Gordon was ready to start. Thomas usually pushed behind the big trains to help them start but he was always uncoupled first, so that when the train was running nicely, he could stop and go back. This time he was late, and Gordon started so quickly that they forgot to uncouple Thomas. Poop, poop, said Gordon. Peep, 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 whistled Thomas. Come on, come on, puffed Gordon to the coaches. Pull harder. Pull harder, puffed Thomas to Gordon. The heavy train slowly began to move out of the station. The train went faster and faster. Too fast for Thomas. He wanted to stop, but he couldn't. Peep, peep, stop, stop, he whistled. Hurry, 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 laughed Gordon in front. You can't get away, you can't get away, laughed the coaches. Poor Thomas was going faster than he had ever gone before. He was out of breath and his wheels hurt him, but he had to go on. I shall never be the same again, he thought sadly. My wheels will be quite worn out. At last they stopped at a station. Everyone laughed to see Thomas puffing and panting behind. They uncoupled him, put him onto a turntable, and then he ran on a siding out of the way. Well, little Thomas, chuckled Gordon as he passed, now you know what hard work means, don't you? Poor Thomas couldn't answer. He had no breath. 
he just puffed slowly away to rest and had a long, long drink. He went home very slowly and was careful afterwards never to be cheeky to Gordon again. Thomas's Train Thomas often grumbled because he was not allowed to pull passenger trains. The other engines laughed. You're too impatient, they said. You'd be sure to leave something behind. Rubbish, said Thomas crossly. You just wait, I'll show you. One night he and Henry were alone. Henry was ill. The men worked hard but he didn't get better. Now Henry usually pulled the first train in the morning, and Thomas had to get his coaches ready. If Henry is ill, he thought, perhaps I shall pull his train. Thomas ran to find the coaches. Come along, come along, he fussed. There's plenty of time, there's plenty of time, grumbled the coaches. He took them to the platform and wanted to run round in front at once. But his driver wouldn't let him. Don't be impatient, Thomas, he said. So Thomas waited and waited. The people got in, the guard and station master walked up and down, the porters banged the doors, and still Henry didn't come. Thomas got more and more excited every minute. The fat director came out of his office to see what was the matter, and the guard and the station master told him about Henry. Find another engine, he ordered. There's only Thomas, they said. You'll have to do it then, Thomas. Be quick now. So Thomas ran round to the front and back down on the coaches ready to start. Don't be impatient said his driver. Wait till everything is ready. But Thomas was too excited to listen to a word he said. What happened then, no one knows. Perhaps they forgot to couple Thomas to the train. Perhaps Thomas was too impatient to wait till they were ready. Or perhaps his driver pulled the lever by mistake. Anyhow, Thomas started. People shouted and waved at him, but he didn't stop. They're waving because I'm such a splendid engine, he thought importantly. Henry says it's hard to pull trains, but I think it's easy. Hurry, 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 he puffed, pretending to be like Gordon. As he passed the first signal box, he saw the men leaning out, waving and shouting. They're pleased to see me he thought. They've never seen me pulling a train before. It's nice of them to wave. And he whistled, peep, peep, thank you, and hurried on. But he came to a signal at danger. Bother, he thought. I must stop, and I was going so nicely too. What a nuisance signals are. And he blew an angry, peep, peep, on his whistle. One of the signalmen ran up. Hello, Thomas, he said. What are you doing here? I'm pulling a train, said Thomas proudly. Can't you see? Where are your coaches then? Thomas looked back. Why, bless me, 
he said, if we haven't left them behind. Yes, said the signalman. You'd better go back quickly and fetch them. Poor Thomas was so sad he nearly cried. Cheer up, said his driver. Let's go back quickly and try again. At the station, all the passengers were talking at once. They were telling the fat director, the station master and the guard what a bad railway it was. But when Thomas came back and they saw how sad he was, they couldn't be cross. So they coupled him to the train and this time he really pulled it. But for a long time afterwards, the other engines laughed at Thomas and said, Look, there's Thomas, who wanted to pull a train, but forgot about the coaches. Thomas and the Trucks Thomas used to grumble in the shed at night. I'm tired of pushing coaches. I want to see the world. The others didn't take much notice, for Thomas was a little engine with a long tongue. But one night, Edward came to the shed. He was a kind little engine and felt sorry for Thomas. I've got some trucks to take home tomorrow, he told him. If you take them instead, I'll push coaches in the yard. Thank you, said Thomas. That will be nice. So they asked their drivers next morning, and when they said yes, Thomas ran happily to find the trucks. Now trucks are silly and noisy. They talk a lot and don't attend to what they are doing. They don't listen to their engine, and when he stops, they bump into each other screaming, Oh, 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 whatever is happening! And, I'm sorry to say, they play tricks on an engine who is not used to them. Edward knew all about trucks. He warned Thomas to be careful, but Thomas was too excited to listen. The shunter fastened the coupling, and when the signal dropped, Thomas was ready. The guard blew his whistle. Peep, peep, answered Thomas, and started off. But the trucks weren't ready. Oh, 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 they screamed as their couplings tightened. Wait, Thomas, wait! But Thomas wouldn't wait. Come on, come on, he puffed, and the trucks grumbled slowly out of the siding onto the main line. Thomas was happy. Come along, come along, he puffed. All right, don't fuss, all right, don't fuss, grumbled the trucks. They clattered through stations and rumbled over bridges. Thomas whistled, peep, peep, and they rushed through the tunnel in which Henry had been shut up. Then they came to the top of the hill where Gordon had stuck. Steady now, steady, warned the driver, and he shut off steam and began to put on the brakes. We're stopping, we're stopping, called Thomas. No, 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 answered the trucks and bumped into each other. Go on, go on, and before his driver could stop them, they had pushed Thomas down the hill and were rattling and laughing behind him. Poor Thomas tried hard to stop them from making him go too fast. Stop pushing, stop pushing, he hissed, but the trucks would not stop. Go on, go on, they giggled in their silly way. He was glad when they got to the bottom. Then he saw in front the place where they had to stop. Oh dear, what shall I do? They rattled through the station, and luckily the line was clear as they swerved into the goods yard. Ooh, ah, groaned Thomas as his brakes held fast and he skidded along the rails. I must stop, and he shut his eyes tight. When he opened them, he saw he had stopped just in front of the buffers, and there watching him was the fat director.
What are you doing here, Thomas? he asked sternly. I've brought Edward's trucks, Thomas answered. Why did you come so fast? I didn't mean to. I was pushed, said Thomas sadly. Haven't you pulled trucks before? No. Then you've a lot to learn about trucks, little Thomas. They are silly things and must be kept in their place. After pushing them about here for a few weeks, you'll know almost as much about them as Edward. Then you'll be a really useful engine. Thomas and the Breakdown Train Every day the fat director came to the station to catch his train and he always said Hello to Thomas. There were lots of trucks in the yard. Different ones came in every day and Thomas had to push and pull them into their right places. He worked hard. He knew now that he wasn't so clever as he had thought. Besides, the fat director had been kind to him, and he wanted to learn all about trucks so as to be a really useful engine. But on a siding by themselves were some trucks that Thomas was told he mustn't touch. There was a small coach, some flat trucks, and two queer things his driver called cranes. That's the breakdown train, he said. When there's an accident, the workmen get into the coach, and the engine takes them quickly to help the hurt people, and to clear and mend the line. The cranes are for lifting heavy things like engines, and coaches, and trucks. One day, Thomas was in the yard when he heard an engine whistling, Help! Help! And a goods train came rushing through much too fast. The engine, a new one called James, was frightened. His brake blocks were on fire, and smoke and sparks streamed out on each side. They're pushing me! They're pushing me! he panted. On, 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 laughed the trucks, and still whistling, Help! Help! Poor James disappeared under the bridge. Surprises, surprises, they come all shapes and sizes. You never know what's round the bend. His mind in life is right as when that's why there's surprises with all the highs and lows. You come out top, all come full stop. Who knows, who knows, who knows? I'd like to teach those trucks a lesson, said Thomas the tank engine. You're halfway up a hillside and all is going fine When all at once a snow slide comes right across the line You think you're really done for but help is on its way You'd be surprised how often that someone saves the day Surprises, surprises, they come all shapes and sizes You never know what's round the bend It's my delight, it's my defend That's why there's surprises with all the highs and lows You come out top or come full stop Who knows, who knows, who knows Presently a bell rang in the signal box and a man came running. James is off the line, the breakdown train, quickly, he shouted. So Thomas was coupled on, the workmen jumped into their coach and off they went. Thomas worked his hardest. Hurry, 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 he puffed. And this time he wasn't pretending to be like Gordon. He really meant it. Bother those trucks and their tricks, he thought. I hope poor James isn't hurt. They found James and the trucks at a bend in the line. 
The brake van and the last few trucks were on the rails, but the front ones were piled in a heap. James was in a field with a cow looking at him, and his driver and fireman were feeling him all over to see if he was hurt. Never mind, James, they said. It wasn't your fault. It was those wooden brakes they gave you. We always said they were no good. Thomas pushed the breakdown train alongside. Then he pulled the unhurt trucks out of the way. Oh dear. Oh dear! They groaned. Serves you right. Serves you right. Puffed Thomas crossly. When the men put other trucks on the line, he pulled them away too. He was hard at work, puffing backwards and forwards all the afternoon. This'll teach you a lesson. This'll teach you a lesson. He told the trucks, and they answered, "Yes, it will. Yes, it will." In a sad, groany, creaky sort of voice, they left the broken trucks and mended the line. Then, with two cranes, they put James back on the rails. He tried to move, but he couldn't. So Thomas helped him back to the shed. The fat director was waiting anxiously for them. Well, Thomas, he said kindly, I've heard all about it, and I'm very pleased with you. You're a really useful engine. James shall have some proper brakes and a new coat of paint, and you shall have a branch line all to yourself. Oh, sir," said Thomas happily. Now Thomas is as happy as can be. He has a branch line all to himself and puffs proudly backwards and forwards with two coaches all day. He is never lonely because there is always some engine to talk to at the junction. Edward and Henry stop quite often and tell him the news. Gordon is always in a hurry and does not stop. But he never forgets to say, "Poop, poop," to little Thomas, and Thomas always whistles, "Beep, beep." James the Red Engine. James and the Top Hat. James was a new engine who lived at a station at the other end of the line. He had two small wheels in front, and six driving wheels behind. They weren't as big as Gordon's, and they weren't as small as Thomas's. You're a special mixed traffic engine. The fat controller told him, "You'll be able to pull coaches or trucks quite easily." But trucks are not easy things to manage, and on his first day, they had pushed him down a hill into a field. He had been ill after the accident, but now he had new brakes and a shining coat of red paint. The red paint will cheer you up after your accident. Said the fat controller kindly, "You are to pull coaches today, and Edward shall help you." They went together to find the coaches. "Be careful with the coaches, James," said Edward. "They don't like being bumped. Trucks are silly and noisy. They need to be bumped and taught to behave. 
but coaches get cross and will pay you out. They took the coaches to the platform and were both coupled on in front. The fat controller, the station master and some little boys all came to admire James's shining rods and red paint. James was pleased. I am a really splendid engine, he thought, and suddenly let off steam. Weesh! The fat controller, the station master and the guard all jumped and a shower of water fell on the fat controller's nice new top hat. Just then the whistle blew and James thought they had better go. So they went. Go on, go on, he puffed to Edward. Don't push, don't push, puffed Edward, for he did not like starting quickly. Don't go so fast, don't go so fast, grumbled the coaches. But James did not listen. He wanted to run away before the fat controller could call him back. He didn't even want to stop at the first station. Edward tried hard to stop, but the two coaches in front were beyond the platform before they stopped, and they had to go back to let the passengers get out. Lots of people came to look at James, and as no one seemed to know about the fat controller's top hat, James felt happier. Presently, they came to the junction where Thomas was waiting with his two coaches. Hello, James, said Thomas kindly. Feeling better? That's right. Ah, that's my guard's whistle. I must go. Sorry I can't stop. I don't know what the fat controller would do without me to run this branch line. And he puffed off importantly with his two coaches into a tunnel. Leaving the junction, they passed the field where James had had his accident. The fence was mended and the cows were back again. James whistled, but they paid no attention. They clattered through Edward's station yard and started to climb the hill beyond. It's ever so steep, it's ever so steep, puffed James. I've done it before, I've done it before, puffed Edward. It's steep, but we'll do it. It's steep, but we'll do it. The two engines puffed together as they pulled the train up the long hill. They both rested at the next station. Edward told James how Gordon had stuck on the hill, and he had had to push him up. James laughed so much that he got hiccoughs and surprised an old lady in a black bonnet. She dropped all her parcels, and three porters, the station master and the guard, had to run after her picking them up. James was quiet in the shed that night. He had enjoyed his day, but he was a little afraid of what the fat controller would say about the top hat. James and the bootlace. Next morning, the fat controller spoke severely to James. If you can't behave, I shall take away your red coat and have you painted blue. James did not like that at all, and he was very rough with the coaches as he brought them to the platform. Come along, come along, he called rudely. All in good time, all in good time, the coaches grumbled. Don't talk, come on, answered James, and with the coaches squealing and grumbling after him, he snorted into the station. James was cross that morning. The fat controller had spoken to him, the coaches had dawdled, and worst of all, he had had to fetch his own coaches. Gordon never does thought James, and he is only painted blue. A splendid red engine like me should never have to fetch his own coaches. 
and he puffed and snorted round to the front of the train and backed onto it with a rude bump. Oh, groaned the coaches, that was too bad. To make James even more cross, he then had to take the coaches to a different platform where no one came near him as he stood there. The fat controller was in his office. The station master was at the other end of the train with a guard, and even the little boys stood a long way off. James felt lonely. I'll show them, he said to himself. They think Gordon is the only engine who can pull coaches. And as soon as the guard's whistle blew, he started off with a tremendous jerk. Come on, come on, come on, he puffed and the coaches, squeaking and groaning in protest, clattered over the points onto the open line. Hurry! 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 puffed James. You're going too fast! You're going too fast! said the coaches, and indeed they were going so fast that they swayed from side to side. James laughed and tried to go faster, but the coaches wouldn't let him. We're going to stop! We're going to stop! We're going to stop! They said, and James found himself going slower and slower. What's the matter? James asked his driver. The brakes are hard on. Leak in the pipe, most likely. You've banged the coaches enough to make a leak in anything. The guard and the driver got down and looked at the brake pipes all along the train. At last they found a hole where rough treatment had made a joint work loose. How shall we mend it? said the guard. James's driver thought for a moment. We'll do it with newspapers and a leather bootlace. Well, where is the bootlace coming from? asked the guard. We haven't one. Ask the passengers, said the driver. So the guard made everyone get out. Has anybody got a leather bootlace? he asked. They all said no, except one man in a bowler hat, whose name was Jeremiah Jobling, who tried to hide his feet. You have a leather bootlace there, I see, sir, said the guard. Please give it to me. I won't, said Jeremiah Jobling. Then said the guard sternly, I'm afraid this train will just stop where it is. Then the passengers all told the guard, the driver and the fireman what a bad railway it was. But the guard climbed into his van and the driver and fireman made James let off steam. So they all told Jeremiah Jobling he was a bad man instead. At last he gave them his laces. The driver tied a pad of newspapers tightly round a hole, and James was able to pull the train. But he was a sadder and a wiser James, and took care never to bump coaches again. <laughs> Troublesome Trucks James did not see the Fat Controller for several days. They left James alone in the shed and did not even allow him to go out and push coaches and trucks in the yard. Oh dear, he thought sadly, I'll never be allowed out any more. I shall have to stay in this shed for always and no one will ever see my red coat again. Oh dear, oh dear. James began to cry. Just then, the fat controller came along. I see you are sorry, James, he said. I hope now that you will be a better engine. You have given me a lot of trouble. People are laughing at my railway, and I do not like that at all. 
I am very sorry, sir, said James. I will try hard to behave. That's a good engine, said the Fat Controller kindly. I want you to pull some trucks for me. Run along and find them. So James puffed happily away. All aboard and close the doors. Whistle blows and the engine roars. Spinning wheels beginning to grip. These are the sounds as we start our trip. Here are your trucks, James, said a little tank engine. Have you got some bootlaces ready? These are the of the engine's made. And he ran off laughing rudely. said the trucks as James backed down on them. We want a proper engine, not a red monster. These are the sounds that the engines make. James took no notice and started as soon as the guard was ready. Come along, come along, he puffed. We won't, we won't, screamed the trucks. But James didn't care. These are the sounds that the engines make. Chugga, chugga. And he pulled the screeching trucks sternly out of the yard. These are the sounds that the engines make. The trucks tried hard to make him give up, but he still kept on. Sometimes their brakes would slip on, and sometimes their axles would run hot. Each time they would have to stop and put the trouble right, and each time James would start again, determined not to let the trucks beat him. Give up! Give up! You can't pull us! You can't! You can't! called the trucks. I can and I will! I can and I will! puffed James. And slowly but surely, he pulled them along the line.
crazy, said James as he backed the other trucks carefully down. What silly things trucks are! There might have been an accident! Meanwhile, the guard had stopped Edward, who was pulling three coaches. Shall I help you, James? called Edward. No, thank you, answered James. I'll pull them myself. Good. Don't let them beat you. So James got ready. Then, with a beep, beep, he was off. I can do it! I can do it! He puffed. All aboard and close the doors. Whistle blows and the engine roars. He pulled and puffed as hard as he could. Peep, pip, peep, peep. You're doing well, whistled Edward as James slowly struggled up the hill, with clouds of smoke and steam pouring from his funnel. I've done it! I've done it! He panted and disappeared over the top. They reached their station safely. James was resting in the yard when Edward puffed by with a cheerful beep, beep. Then... Walking towards him across the rails, James saw the fat controller. Oh dear, what will he say? He asked himself sadly. But the fat controller was smiling. I was in Edward's train and saw everything, he said. You've made the most troublesome trucks on the line behave. After that, you deserve to keep your red coat. James and the Express Sometimes Gordon and Henry slept in James's shed and they would talk of nothing but bootlaces. James would talk about engines who got shut up in tunnels and stuck on hills, but they wouldn't listen and went on talking and laughing. You talk too much, little James, Gordon would say. A fine, strong engine like me has something to talk about. I'm the only engine who can pull the express. When I'm not there, they need two engines. Think of that. I've pulled expresses for years and have never once lost my way. I seem to know the right line by instinct, said Gordon proudly. Every wise engine knows, of course that the signalman works the points to make engines run on the right lines. But Gordon was so proud that he had forgotten. Wake up, James, he said the next morning. It's nearly time for the express. What are you doing? Odd jobs. Ah, well, we all have to begin somewhere, don't we? Run along now and get my coaches. Don't be late now. James went to get Gordon's coaches. They were now all shining with lovely new paint. He was careful not to bump them, and they followed him smoothly into the station, singing happily. We're going away, we're going away. I wish I was going with you, said James. I should love to pull the express and go flying along the line. He left them in the station and went back to the yard, just as Gordon, with much noise and blowing of steam, backed on to the train. The fat controller was on the train with other important people, and as soon as they heard the guard's whistle, Gordon started. Look at me now, look at me now, he puffed and the coaches glided after him out of the station. Poop, 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 poop. Goodbye, little James. See you tomorrow.
James watched the train disappear round a curve and then went back to work. He pushed some trucks into their proper sidings and went to fetch the coaches for another train. He brought the coaches to the platform and was just being uncoupled when he heard a mournful quiet, shush, 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 shush. And there was Gordon trying to sidle into the station without being noticed. Hello, Gordon. Is it tomorrow? asked James. Gordon didn't answer. He just let off steam feebly. Did you lose your way, Gordon? No, it was lost for me, he answered crossly. I was switched off the main line onto the loop. I had to go all round and back again. Perhaps it was instinct, said James brightly. Meanwhile, all the passengers hurried to the booking office. We want our money back, they shouted. Everyone was making a noise, but the fat controller climbed onto a trolley and blew the guard's whistle so loudly that they all stopped to look at him. Then he promised them a new train at once. Gordon can't do it, he said. Will you pull it for us, James? Yes, sir, I'll try. So James was coupled on and everyone got in again. Do your best, James, said the fat controller kindly. Just then the whistle blew and he had to run to get in. Come along, come along, puffed James. You're pulling as well, you're pulling as well, sang the coaches. Hurry, 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 puffed James. Have a look about you, take in what you see. There's a world around you, wherever you may be. Favourite names and places, everywhere you go. So door is our island, the only home we know. Out of Henry's Tunnel, or climbing Gordon's Hill. Past the castle ruins, towards the water mill. We'll whistle past the lighthouse, gleaming red and white. We'll leave the sheds at Hidmouth. Then come back home at night Take a look about you Enjoy the world you see Be a town or country There's such variety Old familiar faces Everywhere you go So your is our island The only home we know Stations and bridges flashed by The passengers leaned out of the windows and cheered and they soon reached the terminus. Everyone said thank you to James. Well, John, said the fat controller, would you like to pull the express sometimes? Yes, please, answered James happily. Towards the castle 
Next day, when James came by, Gordon was pushing trucks in the yard. I like some quiet work for a change, he said. I'm teaching these trucks manners. You did well with those coaches, I hear. Good. We'll show them. And he gave his trucks a bump, making them cry, Oh, 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 oh! James and Gordon are now good friends. James sometimes takes the express to give Gordon a rest. Gordon never talks about bootlaces, and they are both quite agreed on the subject of trucks. <laughs> Thomas and Friends, The Railway Stories, were written by the Reverend W. Audrey and read by Michael Angelis. It is published by BBC Audiobooks under licence from Hit Entertainment Limited. All rights reserved.